Right, so uh, I, I'm a software engineer at Netflix. I'm RGBKRK on Twitter and GitHub. Uh, and I'm here to talk about Interact and kind of talk about uh, data science around Interact and like why the project was created and kind of a survey of <coughs> some of the projects that, that we work on and contribute to. Um, and, I, and I'll talk about like my role uh, at Netflix. So I work on the notebook platform for Netflix in service to data scientists and statisticians and uh, software engineers that are touching data in all sorts of different ways. Um, generally the way that we provide this is we give everybody a container. Like, I mean th this is what like everybody's doing. Like, you give everybody a Docker container and then this is where they can kind of have their execution environment. Uh, and we give them access to Spark, Hive, Presto, uh, everything else. It's all on demand so you, you ask for resources and then we give them to you. You, you want GPUs? We give them to you. Um, anything you want, we give it to you. Which is a Muppet song. And if you don't know that song, it's a good one. Um, and, and so we're, we're constantly upgrading. Uh, like we're forcing people to get onto the latest versions of everything as, as we push, push things out. Um, which sometimes causes friction, but at the same time always make sure that people are up to date and don't try and end up keeping a stagnant stack. Um, and then as part of this like platform and like where, where people are wanting things, users want greater context. So if it's in the, in the case of Spark, they want to know what's going on in their clusters, right? They want to know if they have enough memory. Sometimes they don't need to, they don't know that they need that, but they'll find out when they get an out of memory error and they'll come to our support channel because we end up doing just kind of support across um, all of our notebooks and, and like just across our entire big data uh, platform and they'll find out soon enough that, oh, I, I, don't, I don't have enough memory, what do I need to do? And they're like, start your container now with more memory and then they'll have enough for their drivers and their executors. Um, and then the <coughs> there, there's kind of this desire to to share and collaborate and in many cases that just means sharing a literal notebook. It might mean sharing knitted uh, HTML from our markdown um, or it might be as, as simple as, as just like a CSV or a plot that they want to share. Uh, and then developers themselves want more control over the platforms that we can actually iterate and give uh, the features that people are asking for. They're either asking for them in Jupyter themselves or they're asking for them as part of the, the kernel, the runtime that they're using within Jupyter. Um, it's all, all over the place and people want to build with modern tools. And so the, the main thing that we're using throughout this is Jupyter and, and I mean that in terms of the IPython kernel and in terms of the protocols and notebooks that we work with. Right, and so if, if you don't know Jupyter and I mean people have, have shown it earlier, I, it's, it's this nice sandbox way for me to work between uh, code and prose and plots and all in one document that I can share with someone. And it's an advancement on, on what I get out of just working out of a single script. Um, and so, so background for me, like when, as a mathematician some number of years ago, I was delighted to have this REPL experience where I could iterate back and forth really quickly in Python and figure out what I wanted or iterate back and forth really quickly within R at the command line. And then when you bring that into a notebook experience, no matter what the notebook is, and so I'm saying agnostic of of Jupyter, if I'm working in R Markdown or I'm working in, in Zeppelin or whatever else, I'm just really happy to have this kind of like dual reporting kind of sandbox that I get to iterate with and, and work across. And, and so I, I want more people to experience that joy. Like they, they need to be able to, you know, explore and, and research and find results uh, and then publish those, you know, amongst themselves and with each other. <coughs> Uh, and, and so one, one of the ways that, that we've started doing that is with the Interact project um, and it's effectively kind of, it's a reimagining of the same Jupyter protocols, like we're using the same formats and the same protocols um, but, but we evolve with Jupyter but carve out a UI space to approach um, different kinds of users. Um, in, in the case for, for Interact, a lot of the focus was how can we make this more approachable for analysts and students? Um, and, and so people that might not be deeply embedded into um, like a statistical workflow but you want to get them introduced and maybe they're not as, as well versed with coding itself and so we want to make those a lot easier. Uh, and it's hard to make those trade offs in like a big project but you can use the same protocols across these. Right, so I'll talk about Interact. Um, 
And it's probably worth mentioning, so Interact is under NumFocus, which is a 5013C nonprofit uh, based out of Austin, but it also, uh, NumFocus also sp uh, supports Jupyter and NumPy and SciPy and pretty much all, of, all the rest of that stack, as well as Julia and um, uh, MC Stan and a bunch of different other projects. Um, and Interact wouldn't be what it is today without the support of Plotly, uh, Rackspace, Domino, and Three Blades. Um, they, they've all helped uh, Interact grow by, by paying for development or, or marketing or, or generally whatever resources. Uh, and so Interact as a project uh, effectively encompasses a desktop notebook application, so that's what we just call Interact, an Atom editor plugin that's called Hydrogen. Um, we're starting up some stuff around notebook sharing. Uh, and then kind of build your own with packages. I mean, the hope is that you could take these individual packages and build your own experience. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of go into later what I mean by that. And I really just mean kind of get yourself out of notebook mode and think about how you could use Jupyter protocols for yourself. Um, and then Interact is a bunch of people. Um, it's not like one company is sponsoring it. Um, like I'm one person at Netflix that works on it. Uh, and there's one other person from Netflix, but there's people at, at different universities and different companies that are all, that are working on it. And some of the contributors are here in this room. Um, so ask them questions, like Paul. Uh, and so generally I'd say that the mission is to create these fantastic interactive computing experiences. Um, so people can collaborate with each other, work with their data, learn about libraries, and just generally iterate. Uh, and so, so I'll talk about the desktop application first. Um, let's see if the video plays. I click it. Um, so it's a slight reimagining of the Jupyter Notebook interface. Um, and what I mean by that is there's nothing really fancy about the desktop itself. It does some simple things that you couldn't do before, like double clicking a notebook to open it. So if you've ever like gone to the point where like where do I launch the server, how do I get to this, like the case is like if I'm here and I, and I look for a notebook, let's see, I double click the notebook and then it just opens. Like I search for it on my drive, I used to use my desktop. I don't need to build uh, a fancy service for like finding my documents, it's already there. Um, yeah. I almost feel like I, I over explain this part, but people are like, why would you build a desktop version? We're like, well, this is why, because they're documents. Uh, and some of the, the neat things that we've done but are not really exclusive to Interact, is especially as you can, you can start importing these as uh, JupyterLab plugins and notebook plugins, uh, is built in Vega support. What that means under the hood is that like we have a, there's a media type that comes up, so if you, if you produce Vega Lite, uh, then we're able to render that directly in, as well as embed that in the notebook document, instead of embedding the, the HTML. And the same thing goes for, for Plotly, there's a Plotly MIME type, and so if you're using Plotly in Python right now, uh, it, it will actually embed this uh, immediately. Um, this doesn't, uh, on the surface this doesn't help users, but it's really helpful in like a security context, um, because we embed the, ooh, we, we embed the, the literal JSON, so it means that when you display it on Notebook Viewer, you run your own internal version that, that's displaying these. You don't have to worry about random JavaScript running on the page because it's only working from, from this JSON payload and just with a specific function that we already know the attack surface for. Um, and generally, we want to be able to support a lot richer of MIME types. So the one that's shown here is this data resource. Uh, so pandas just put in support for um, this MIME type to come out on their next release so that when you get a table, you'll actually have something that you can scroll through uh, and work with and that keeps the column headers fixed. And if there were multiple indices here, it would show all the, all the indices on the left and then those would stay fixed as you scroll through the table. And this, this leads to being able to do visualization really, really simply. We have all the data about what the, like what each of these fields is, what, what their type is, and we'll be able to actually do light visualization in the front. Um, so if anybody wants to carve that out, that's, that's currently an open issue. Um, 
Good. So earlier I talked about how people want to share notebooks, and this is the, the main thing that I've been working on uh, at Netflix, but with interact components. Um, and so it's called Commuter, and you can get it up and running pretty quickly. Uh, it's one NPM install away, and then you can run Commuter server to, to share these notebooks. And so down in the corner there, that, that's showing a, a notebook that's been rendered. Um, and, and like you can browse through them, and it works a lot like looking at a, a notebook server. Um, and for us, we store our notebooks on S3, and so this, this basically just renders a notebook from S3, and then you're able to view it, but then we can also do local storage sharing. Uh, and effectively, you just point it to the directory that you want to open with, or you just open commuter server there, uh, and, and it'll just go ahead and render it. Um, and it doesn't just render notebooks. Like one, one key ask that we had was that we wanted to make sure that people could do plain markdown, R markdown, HTML, even their Zeppelin notebooks. We went ahead and uh, added support for rendering uh, and CSVs. Because ge generally we want to be, be able to enable people no matter what they're using because people are going to pick and choose different tools. Uh, it's easier for us to like center on, on, a, on a few technologies that we can work with in open source. Um, but like, for as much as possible, just let people um, do what they need to do to get things done. And so that, that's what we do just by simple rendering. Um, which also means that like that data resource thing that we were showing before, like we just have one common table for people to work with. This is just a React component. So we're like, oh, well we can use that same thing to render our CSVs. Done. Right, and so like I was saying, that, that's, that's built from Interact desktop components. Um, and that's kind of important to note because I'm, I'm effectively like putting the, putting the tablecloth out and putting out the dishwash, dishware and then I'm taking the tablecloth away and be like, oh look, it's still the same interact pieces. The reality is that like the page that you view, which I probably should have just kept right here, could be editable and could connect up to kernels. So our, our next step is to, to make it so that you could actually just execute notebooks straight from commuter itself. <clears throat> um, generally speaking, the opinions are baked in, like as far as how we're running it, but you can bring yours and we're hoping that people are able to use more of the components. Um, and so, <clears throat> like if you, if you join GitHub, or if you, if you go to the GitHub issues or join our Slack, like we're, we're pretty responsive to figuring out like what, what people want to build and what they want to do. Oh, that emoji did not render. That's okay. It's a warning symbol, but it's yellow. Um, and so the, the important thing about commuter and why we wrote this as one separate thing that does rendering is that everybody wants to share URLs. And if you've ever shared a Jupyter Notebook URL before, you would know that you're effectively sharing your live session with them, even if you didn't mean to, and they end up squashing each other's work. Um, and so we just wanted a canonical place for people to be able to uh, go, oh, here is my notebook. Whether or not their notebook server was online, they'd be able to, to serve it from one canonical place. Um, and, and this is kind of leading towards real time collaboration in the sense that we're forcing people to have one path. Um, but like a next step from this here is that the notebooks themselves can be rendered server side as well as taking updates from the kernels. And this is really important when you're running a, a long term job, right? You want to be able to close your tab or lose your Wi Fi connection or whatever else happens with your network, um, but still get results coming in and building up an overall notebook document. Um, but like I was saying before, notebooks aren't really the end goal. Like all of this and all the Jupyter specs are really out there so that you can build interactive computing experiences. Like you can go from an interpreter and have it provide um, something more rich. Um, and so that goes into to the Atom plugin, which is Hydrogen. So if you're using Atom today, you can install it, either from the packages menu or with APM install Hydrogen. Um, and, and, that, and that gives you a, a way to basically in line be able to run, run commands. You know, whether you're gonna do a print or in the case that is shown here, you're able to see LaTeX, you're able to get plots, and they have another thing here called watch expressions. And so I'll go to each video here. And so this is, this one's showing that you can, right, you can just select a little bit of code and run it, or run like a whole section. Yeah. So the, in this, this one's the watch expressions, and I'll play this back, a, excuse me, I'll play this back another time here. 
effectively it, it keeps track of the results and as you're, as you're changing a variable, it keeps running those again, right? I mean you could, you could build some really uh, slick advanced UI to do this but this, this is doing the, the dummy thing of just go ahead and run this stuff for me. This is kind of like a, a carryover from MATLAB. So if you've worked in MATLAB and you've had, um, you, you've had these watch expressions, it's, it's basically that same thing again but it's embedded in Atom. There we go. And so what it's showing here is that you get, oops, you get the same inspector window that you get out of uh, the notebooks when you try to do an inspection on an object. So we, let's see, we've got integrate, and so you can get the documentation in line, like live from your running session, as well as all the, the code completion. So you get both the static analysis that you get out of Atom, as well as the dynamic code analysis while you have a running session with a kernel. Right. Uh, and so I guess talking about what, what's next, uh, I'm, we're gonna continue on with the web app efforts so that you can use and interact in a, in a separate context. Um, we keep exporting the different packages for people to work with. Um, and, and that means that we're gonna support and maintain those as, as best we can so that people can build new experiences. Um, and one thing that I didn't really get to touch on much here um, is that we wanna improve Spark and other cluster support across Jupyter and IPython. And so when I was saying that there's Interact is this other project that's the front end pieces. The reality is that we end up making PRs to Jupyter and IPython to try to get the advancements that work across that whole ecosystem. Like we're, we're not hoping to make just, just another Jupyter-like thing. We actually want to use Jupyter. It's just that we want to have our own opinions about how we're building certain things. And so as we go with those, it means you can put pressure on, on each of them to get the features you want out. Um, and if you go down to uh, interact slash initiatives, you'll see some of these outlined. Each, each repository has its own roadmap, but then there's kind of like the high level roadmap of what people are working on. Uh, some of these are sponsored efforts under uh, the Sloan, uh, under Sloan um, through NumFocus, uh, and others are just things that people are interested in working on. Well, that's that. Does anybody have questions? So just curious uh, whether you leverage any of the Jupyter Hub uh, code base or uh, just pure raw Jupyter? Oh, uh, at Netflix or for Interact? I, I bet e uh, either would be oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Interact itself is all JavaScript and just React. Um, and so Jupyter Hub is built on top of the, the config proxy and is generally like like Jupyter Hub could honestly be used to launch other services. So if Interact was the front end that was there, it, it could it could launch it. Um, Ju Jupyter Hub is definitely the the way to go for the multi user setup in terms of multi user like what resources are available. But um, yeah, there's there's no integration with it. But people should totally use Jupyter Hub. Um, as for Netflix, um, internally we don't use Jupyter Hub, and I'm hoping that we switch to it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Quick follow up. So, so then, uh, for like containers, do, do you use like Kubernetes or like on which, uh, where do the, uh, the kernels actually live and how are they contained? Yeah. Uh, so at, at Netflix, we use something called Titus. Um, that was like an internal thing. Originally, we were using Swarm and then we kind of had our own, uh, setup that we wanted, but it, it's an internal, uh, container platform. How many users do we have? What for Interact? Yeah. That's Paul. <laughs> I've not looked at the last, yeah I could query it now. No I will not live demo myself to hell. Um, uh, the release before this last we were at like 500 users. But we made another release and we've had a lot more stars so more. <laughs> I should really count these things. Ugh, I'm, I'm just gonna do it. Oh my gosh. 
actually. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, hey. Well, since I'm here, display dot JSON. Da -da. I think this is the last release. Yep. Assets. Two hundred and twenty eight users of the well, it's downloads. I don't know if it's real users. Two hundred and eighty nine Windows users. Two hundred and forty three for the app image. So that's for Linux. Oh, wow. Okay, that's higher than I thought. 1,413 downloads of the Mac app, the DMG. Not many people download the tarball. 1,442 for the Windows executable version. And the Debian package is 951. Oh, so thousands, okay. I didn't know, thanks Paul. <coughs> So you made a you made a point earlier that um, that uh, this is aiming at kind of a, a broader audience for Jupiter, um, you know, maybe less technical or something. Who is it not for? And, you know, are there is there a class of people who should keep using <coughs> the uh, old style notebook? A anybody or? who wants to use command mode in Jupiter <laughs> should keep using Jupiter. Uh, so, there, there's a lot of stuff here where it's more click friendly. Um, we keep the, um, like we have a we have a context menu on each cell individually, and then we have a way to in, in, like create cells in between here. Um, right, I can click here to add code or markdown. Oh, you can't see. Oh my gosh. Well, that's embarrassing. When I demoed earlier, did you see nothing? Oh, there we go. No, wait, does that mean you couldn't see the downloads? Man, I did all that live stuff. Man, I had such a sweet little thing. Did you guys see the JSON? Oh, okay, you saw it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's, it, for power users, I think it's better for them to have Jupyter because Jupyter enables you to configure just about everything, whereas here we try to set an exact op opinion for where we think things should be, uh, and we're gonna slowly introduce configuration, um, but we don't want it to be like configuring Linux. Like, you, you shouldn't sit down and, and think to yourself that, I, that you wanna configure everything. If somebody wants to sit down and like tweak things exactly to what they want, they should keep using Jupyter. I guess I, I have kind of, kind of a, maybe a basic question about, oops. The notebook interface. I'm, I'm just curious. Um, like in the actual usage, w it has all the tools to add like the presentational content. Um, what is like the breakdown of how people actually use it? Um, like for exploration versus for presentation. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, or I mean, not necessarily numbers, but just like conceptually or philosophically. I mean, I, I can speak to what I've seen now at Netflix. I mean, before this, um, I worked at Rackspace and I feel like sometimes it was like working in a vacuum in terms of open source, but when I came to Netflix, I got to see how people were working with this stuff and immediately see the pain points that they were experiencing um, in terms of like how they were, how they were working with stuff. A, a lot of the time, the reason that people end up in the notebooks is because it's the easiest way to get to Spark, like immediately. Like they don't have to configure anything, they launch their notebook server and then they have access. Um, and those people aren't reporting, at least until they've like done, done their kind of sandbox work with it. Um, and that's, that's on the order of hundreds of users internally. Um, but I, I don't really know. I mean it's hard, when you go to a conference, 
you see lots of use of Jupyter as if it's like the presentation tool as you like explore stuff. I don't know. I'm not the best answer. That's good. That's a good question for Fernando or Brian. For another question or two. If So we have shirts. They're either near the Plotly table or the Three Blades table. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, you should you should come grab some, and download Interact. <laughs> cool. Oh, you know here, we'll go to. Am I on screen? You like my cat? <laughs> right there. Click it. Click it. So if you go to Interact.io, uh, you can you can go straight on here and download. Uh, and if you need to get additional kernels to, so if you, if you want to have runtimes for Python or JavaScript or R, uh, we have some light amount of documentation in here to, to click through so that you can install the packages you need and get, get running. So R, Python, Node, Scala, I mean there's, there's tons of different Jupyter kernels. Um, come ask me questions. Yep. Thanks.